When building a scrum board, it's important to clearly understand what types of items the team wants to visualize. Trying to manage different types of items, whose life cycles have nothing to do with each other, will dramatically reduce, or even eliminate, the biggest benefits of the board, ease of reading and simplicity. During the first part of this video, I will shortly explain the key principles behind the elaboration of this scrum board and the approach that was followed. The importance of properly defined workflows, different visualization perspectives, among others, are some of the mentioned topics. In the second part, I will demonstrate how these concepts are implemented in Jira to ensure an effective, simple and transparent scrum board. However, please note that I will primarily focus in the active sprint and as such, in the configuration options that will have an impact on it. As a final note, it's important to mention that while building this scrum board, I used the script runner plugin from Adaptivist to help creating the specific filters. This is actually one of the most well-known plugins that allows extending Jira functionalities according to my preferences. If you have any suggestions, questions, ideas or observations, please leave them in the comments section. Make sure you give a thumbs up if you like the video. So, without further delay, let's see how to implement a simple but effective Scrum board. A Jira Scrum board, among other elements, has two key sections. The first one is the backlog. This is where all the items the team will work are visible, organized by sprints and taking into account the implementation in the context of the epics and releases. The second section is related with the active sprint, which is where the team scrum board is available. It's precisely on this section that we'll dedicate most of the time of this video. When a team builds a scrum board in Jira, it must be clear what are the items that will be part of that board. One of the most frequent mistakes that I see happens when the teams do not reflect about what really makes sense to them to see in their board and they include such distinct items like stories, epics, risks, change requests, etc. Now imagine that those workflows must be organized in just one board, in such a way that you can clearly see the status of each of them in the context of their life cycle. What will be the next step of each item? There goes simplicity and clarity of reading. For that reason, I strongly recommend that teams start by thinking about the life cycle of the most important items that they want to work with and then configure their workflows. Only after doing that, they'll be ready to start configuring the scrum board. To have a simple yet effective scrum board, I always include the following types of items. Stories, enabler stories, bugs and subtasks. From a configuration point of view, I also include the epics, but for now, I will leave them out, since we are focusing on the active sprint section of the board. A typical scrum board focuses on how the team's work evolves, if possible, in the context of each backlog item. This is usually represented in a board like this. The loft column is where the team has the backlog items they committed to deliver during the iteration, while the following columns represent the life cycle of the subtasks being done in the context of each backlog item. This imaginary stream lane is narrowed by each backlog item visible on the most left column. The approach followed by this board makes it perfectly visible the progress of each work item being done by the team for each backlog item, since the only need to take a look on how the subtasks are distributed to have an idea of how much work is left to be done to complete the item. This is indeed a great approach. However, I believe there's a limitation with this board. You can't actually tell in which step of its life cycle a backlog item is, simply because that information is not mapped in the board. In order to solve that problem, I introduced the concept of a double stream lane, which I find particularly interesting, taking into account the functionalities that Jira provides. So, in the board, you'll have two clearly limited stream lanes. In the upper part of the board, there's a stream lane that is focused in the life cycle of the backlog items, like the stories, enabler stories and bugs, making it easy to understand what's the current status of each. Apart from the team members, other stakeholders can also collect relevant information about how the items are actually evolving. Needless to say, this is only possible because all these backlog items have the same life cycle, allowing them to share the same stream lane, 
as explained in my previous video about workflows. The second streamline includes all the subtasks that must be completed throughout the iteration to ensure a successful delivery of the backlog items. This is the daily work that the team members discuss during their daily stand-ups. This is, by far, the most common type of information that can be found in Scrum boards. The way that Jira works allows you to immediately know to which backlog item a subtask is contributing. Both stream lanes share the same board. By default, and as you can see, it's the upper stream lane that uses all the statuses, since it's the most complex workflow. On the other hand, the lower stream lane only uses a subset of them. This is because the life cycle of a subtask is simpler by nature and that's the workflow that we use to keep track of the work being done. What makes this board possible is the compatibility between the several life cycles of the different types of items involved. In fact, we are talking about two different workflows. One for the backlog items and another one for the subtasks. Now let's talk about another interesting and practical aspect of the board. The ability to work as an information radiator is essential as a supporting tool for the daily stand-ups. It's precisely under that context that I propose creating a set of filters that are focused on each team's member perspective. Each filter represents the work that is currently being done, or at least assigned, to each team member. When you click the filter, you will see the work swim lane, all the subtasks that are assigned to that team member, while checking the current status of each. On the other hand, in the upper stream line, one will be able to see all the backlog items that the team member is contributing to as a consequence of the subtasks that have been assigned to him. Also, and just like for the subtasks, the current status of each backlog item will be automatically visible. This approach allows to understand, among other things, if each team member is focused on too many things at the same time, which, as we all know, is one of the biggest sources of waste. Creating the perfect scrum board has several aspects that must be considered and well thought in advance. Only by doing that, you can guarantee a coherent board that is aligned with the needs of the team. Now that I've shown you the principles behind the board that I propose, let's take a look at how they can be implemented with Jira. Let me start by stating that the goal of this video is not to show you how to use Jira or, in this particular case, how to create a board. For that, you have plenty of good videos available. However, what I will demonstrate is how to implement the logic that I've just described before. After creating the Scrum board based on the specific project area that you plan to manage, Jira will automatically create a filter. This is where I draw the first point of attention. The types of items to be included in the board should be headed to the filter configuration. As part of the backlog items, we have the story, enabler story, and bugs, which will be placed in the upper streamline. As for the atomic units of work, we have the subtasks, which represent the tasks to be completed to deliver each backlog item. Those will be visible in the lower streamline. Finally, there are the epics that will represent the functionality and more that will be implemented via the stories. These will be only visible as part of the backlog section of the board. Now, you just need to save and go back to the board configuration to confirm that the filter is updated, or if it's a new one, to change it. The next step is to configure the columns that will be part of the Kanban board available in the Active Sprint section. The first thing that you need to bear in mind is that the columns are a more intuitive way of visualizing and updating the progress of the several items that the team needs to deliver. It's very important to ensure consistency while creating the columns, since it's there that the different status of the workflows will be mapped. So let's start by removing the statuses that belong exclusively to the EPIC and put them in the unused status column. These are Funnel, Analyzing, Backlog, Implementing, Validating on Staging, Deploying in Production, and Releasing. The next step is to create the several columns that will support the different statuses of the works to close to be mapped. These are Open, In Progress, In Review, In Acceptance, and Done. Next, 
we map the several statuses to the columns. Let's start by configuring the statuses related with the backlog items. As you can easily see, there's a mapping relationship of one to one. This is due to the fact that we are configuring the most complex workflow, and as such, the columns were created to map it. On the other hand, the subtasks workflow fits perfectly in the previously defined columns because its simplicity allows it. You can find additional information about the meaning of each status in my video about workflows. The next step is about creating the two swim lanes that represent the two levels of work that each team deals on a daily basis. To implement both swim lanes, I need to indicate in the first place that they are based on the queries and not other options like epics, stories, etc. After selecting this option, the next step is to create the two swim lanes. The first one I will create is used to host the backlog items. For that reason, we will call it backlog items. Quite original, right? For the JQL, I use a simple restriction to include the relevant types of items. As you can see, the epics are out, since I only want to see them in the backlog section. As for the description, it's only about the purpose of the swim lane. The second swim lane is used to host the subtasks. We will call it tasks. As a JQL, I will use another simple restriction on the type of item. In this case, the subtasks. As for the description, just like before, it's all about the purpose of the swim lane. Finally, the last step in this section is to ensure that you have created the correct order for the swim lanes, placing the backlog items in the upper part and the tasks in the lower part. And that's it. Now it's time to set up the filters. This is where I configure the filters that will make the swim lanes a great context tool, automatically adjusted to the needs of the user. In this particular case that I will demonstrate is about making the swim lanes a work visualization tool, both for the logged user or any other user that is part of the team. The first thing that I will do is to update one of the queries that comes by default in the port to show exactly what I want. Firstly, this query, My Tasks, shows the tasks assigned to the logged user. However, we want to be a bit more specific. I want to see in the lower swim lane just the subtasks assigned to the logged user. Secondly, in the upper swim lane, I want to see all the items where the subtasks belong to. This will allow the logged user to understand to which backlog items he is contributing to. The best part is that this logic can be repeated for the different team members. As such, we just need a filter with the username of the team member and the same query described before. Well, almost the same, as we need to replace the function correct user by the name of the user we want to query. For the sake of simplicity of this example, I just had the two users to the filters. As we may have already guessed, this can be a great option for a daily stand-up, where, for each team member, it can be easily seen what is she currently working on and how is contributing to the iteration goal. And that's it when it comes to the filters. Finally, last but not least, a very important aspect is related to the units used in the Scrum board for estimates. I'm sure you will not be surprised that I chose story points. Now, when it comes to the time tracking, I'm a big supporter of using both remaining time and original estimates, because I believe the planning of each iteration should consider all required subtasks estimated in hours. Like this, Every time the team updates their estimates about the remaining time left to complete each subtask, the burndown chart gets updated with that information. In one of my next videos, I will show how the burndown chart is influenced by the regular updates of information made by the team members. Now that we have configured all the relevant options, at least for now, let's see the final result and how easy it is to read the information on the board. Looking at the board, you can clearly see the two swim lanes we configured. The first, Backlog Items, is where you can see all the backlog items like Stories, Enabler Stories and Bugs. Also note that these items move through all the columns of the board, since as you remember, we mapped each status of the workflow to each column. 
This means that all the columns can and should be used for the backlog items. In the second streamline, you can see the several subtasks that belong to the backlog items that are part of the current iteration and represent the work to be done. As you remember, they only use a subset of the columns, since their life cycle is simpler. In this case, open, in progress and done. This is why Jira won't let me drag the subtasks to some of the columns. They are not mapped to a status that is part of the subtask life cycle. As for the filters, the one named My Tasks displays in the task streamline the subtasks that have been assigned to me, while at the same time it displays in the backlog item streamline all the backlog items that those subtasks are part of. I can clearly see what is the status of the work that I have been assigned to me and the status of all the items that I'm contributing to. The other filters with the same names of the team members have exactly the same logic. By clicking in this filter, you can see the subtasks and the corresponding backlog items to which they contribute to. In this case, we are talking about the subtasks assigned to Chaba. As you can see, you can easily use this configuration to help supporting the team's daily stand-up. This is even more obvious if you are talking about distributed teams who use digital boards.